Hello and what's up GSC Pokemon Challenges fam, how you guys doing? We're back and it's time for more of the Bugsy Minimum Battle series. We already completed episode one where we only had two Pokemon fail in that section. Those were of course Totodile and Squirtle. Everything else in the first episode got through. We got the entire Charmander line through. We managed to get through with the second stage and third stage Water Evos. We got Meganium through, which I thought was kind of lucky that might have been a really really lucky run i'm gonna have to go back and do more testing to find out if that's actually fair or legitimate or if we just got way too many misses from that scyther we'll just have to see but uh yeah it got through and quill lava and typhlosion got through so that was pretty surprising i didn't think it was actually that bad but one thing we have to keep in mind from the first episode was that all of those pokemon were in the medium soul level up group they were able to get all the way up to level 18 by the time they had beaten everything in this section. But today we're coming in with a lot of medium fast level up group Pokemon. It's kind of a weird misnomer. Medium fast seems like these Pokemon should level up faster than the medium slow group. That's not how it actually works. In the early game, they level up slower. So I'm only expecting to get to maybe level 15 or 16 in this section rather than getting to level 18. And that could be a massive disadvantage because we've got a lot of Pokemon here that could have troubles. That being said, we're going to start off with some that I think will do at least reasonably well. We're going to have a bunch of flying types. We're going to start off with the Butterfree and Ledeon, of course. Then we've got the Pidgey line. We've got a Fero. We've got a Noctowl so we can see how all those flying types do. Then we've got Raticate and... I'm probably going to be fine there. I think it's going to do just fine, but we'll compare it up to the Furret. Then we've got the Arbok and finally the Pikachu line, including Baby Pichu. And we've got Sandshrew and Sandslash. We're just going to have to see how all of these Pokemon do, especially the ones that end up going up against the Bayleaf. Bayleaf seems to be pretty hard on Rival 2's team. That could be the wall. We'll just find out. With that said, let's get into this. So first up, we're actually going to start off with Ledeon, and Ledeon has a slight advantage in that it's actually in the fast level up group, and while its stats aren't necessarily great, it might just be okay. It can use some confusion strategies, and that may be the way to get through this section. So one thing I've got to mention is an omission from the last episode. There is actually another stat boosting item that we can get. It's not relevant to Ledeon, but if we talk to Arthur right here on a Thursday, He's going to give us access to the Hardstone. Hardstone, of course, powers up rock type moves that could be useful in this section, especially when we get to some Pokemon. For example, maybe we're going to have a Golem here or something. The rock type boost might just be enough to be able to get through that Bailey. Of course, it's not going to help us right here, but we'll grab the item just in case. And the same as the pink bow, I'm simply going to allow myself to get access to it if it's necessary in this next section by using Gamehook. And in fact, there's even another item that we can get right here north of this Pokemon Center before we go into Unid Cave. We can talk to Frida on a Friday, and she's going to give us access to the Poison Barb. Yet again, it does nothing for this Ledeon, but it does power up Poison type moves. If we have a Pokemon that is a Poison type or using a Poison type move, something like a, for example, a Tentacool when it gets here, that could be the item that helps us get through a tough fight. So we're simply going to just add those two on whenever we happen to need them. Now that we know that they're legitimately available. Thanks to the commenters for pointing that out. Appreciate you guys. I learn new things about this version every day. So now we've made it to Azalea Town with our Ledeon. And this might be one of the first Pokemon that we've had that could struggle when we actually get into the Slowpoke well. Now we do have access to the Swift TM. So we do have a way to potentially get a higher damage output move but we're just gonna have to see how this actually works. And this fight is pretty well wrecking us. So the fact that we only have access to tackle here is pretty bad. I'm just gonna take the upgrade to Swift right now because I think it's gonna make this section a lot easier. Of course, Swift is nearly double the power of tackle and it's guaranteed to hit every single time. So we have, I think, a possibility of finally getting through these fights, but it's not consistent. We can see the Raditas can still knock us out, so we might need some Confusion luck here or something to get through. And sure enough, Confusion was enough to get us through there. 
Now it's just time to see if we can get through the rest of these trainers without too much difficulty. Of course, we resist leech life, which is very nice. So we can easily knock out this Zubat. Now the question is, how do we do against Ekans? I think confusing it is the strat. There we go. We get the confusion on it. It goes for wrap, but that should be fine. And we're just then going to spam Swift and hopefully be able to knock this one out. Just like that, we do get an easy win against Jesse Jr. So with that, we can finally make our way to the last member of Team Rocket down here. We are up against James, who's been demoted from his higher position in Team Rocket. He now is just on Slowpoke Well Duty. But we get hit by Smog and Poisoned there as we were trying to get him confused. This is probably one of the tougher fights in this section. I'm just interested to see with our Swift. We only did five damage there. And so that would mean he's an eight hit KO range with Swift from Ledeon. So the only way we're getting through is with the confusion strats. Here on the second attempt, we do confuse him and he hits himself in confusion turn one. Poison gas can also miss, of course. And we've run out of PP in Swift. So now we have to go tackle and just hope that we can manage to do enough damage. And with this one, we do manage to chip him down and get to level 13. And just like that, we have made it through Slowpoke well. Kurt is feeling great again. Apparently, all he needed to do was just take a knee for a minute and he's perfectly fine. That being done, we now have to decide, do we fight against our rival or do we fight against Bugsy? And the answer I think is pretty clear. We want to go up against Bugsy because we don't even have a move that can hit the ghost type. So uh, that Ghastly is going to be a nightmare. We're going to have to get it to hit itself in confusion, I think in order to get through that fight. And since the only level up move that we could even get is Comet Punch at level 15, we're basically gonna either have to do confusion strats or struggle strats to get through rival two. It's gonna be terrible. So here standing right in front of Bugsy, we have a level 14 Letty on now. We haven't even gotten Comet Punch yet, but we have 44 HP, same move set as before, but now 20 attack, 24 defense, 25 special attack, 40 special defense and 34 speed. The issue is that we need attack and defense here, and those are our weakest stats, but we should outspeed things, so let's just see how this goes. So here, Bugsy, round number one. We're going to start off by trying to confuse his Pokemon. I think this is the best strategy because at least we might be able to get more damage on them if they hit themselves in confusion. And we just don't have a great attack stat, so it's not like we're going to get any real advantage by trying to go with anything else. So we take Metapod down and out comes Kakuna, who is going to use things like Poison Sting on us. So we're kind of hoping it will hit itself in confusion. Unfortunately, it managed to use a Harden first, which is kind of bad luck because that means that it's not going to do as much damage to itself when it hits itself in confusion. And now we get poisoned. But I think we need the pink bow here in order to do enough damage to have any shot. So I think we really wanted to not get a Harden there. We do level up and learn Comet Punch though, and Quick Attack just easily knocks us out. So here in the second attempt, he actually put his Scyther out second and we did get it confused. So we are going to be able to knock out the Scyther. The problem is that we're on very low health as we learn Comet Punch. But if we can't manage to confuse this Kakuna, we're just gonna get wrecked by poison here. So no chance. So after a lot of attempts there, I've decided that I'm at least going to try Rival 2 one time. Because while the Scyther does seem to mix up between using Fury Cutter and using Quick Attack, Quick Attack does like 11 to 12 damage per hit. So we really just can't survive many hits there once it snaps out of Confusion. But maybe, just maybe, if we can find a way through Rival 2, we'll gain an extra level or two and get a better range there. So here, attempt one at rival number two. Oh, the attempts counter still counts all the uh, the Bugsy attempts. But here, we're going to try to get Supersonic to hit this Ghastly. And this is the really key part. We simply need the Ghastly to knock itself out in confusion. It's going to take tons and tons of turns for that to ever happen. But if we can get the luck for it to happen, then we should at least have a shot against the rest of the team. So it looks like the Ghastly does about seven damage to itself each time it hits itself in confusion, which would mean that this takes five turns of Ghastly hitting itself in order to get through it. So we do get through on the first attempt to Quilava, but we're paralyzed in this one, so we're just gonna get burned and lose. 
So we just have to keep in mind that the Gastly is basically 50-50 to hit itself in confusion when it is confused, and Lick is about 1 in 5 to paralyze us. Now it can only damage us with Lick, which is only doing like 3 damage per hit, so we should have plenty of turns to try to get the Ghastly to hit itself in confusion. The problem is just that then we're going to have to come up against that Quillava, who may not be possible at this point, especially once we're paralyzed. We've got 21 HP here, we just barely survive, but we missed the Supersonic, and Supersonic is the only way that we're going to get through Quillava here, because it's definitely not going to be a 1 or 2 hit KO with Swift. So what's pretty clear at this point is between the luck that it takes to actually get the Confusion, plus to get that Ghastly to hit itself in Confusion, plus the luck it would take to not get paralyzed, is just too much at this point. We can check and see if we can finally make it through Bugsy, but even if we can, I'm not sure that it improves that fight at all, since the entire strategy has to come down to Ghastly hitting itself in confusion. Now we can test out Struggle strats, just because Struggle is boosted by the pink bow, funny enough, but let's hold off on that just for a minute. Let's go back to Bugsy, try him just a couple more times, see if we can find a range that gets through. So here we're back to the Scyther, and we have already beaten the Kakuna, but only 20 HP remaining, and we've taken a lot of speed drops here. So this is another one where we just need God tier luck to get through. So we've already seen that it's basically impossible to get through rival number two, and it's basically impossible to get through Bugsy. So the only other question really is if struggle somehow helps us. In the Bugsy fight, Struggle doesn't help us at all because we're already doing more than 50 base power of damage with our Swift attack. But against Rival 2, it could make a difference given that we don't have access to a move that can hit the Ghost. So let's just see if Struggle gets us through Ghastly quickly enough and somehow we can get a range that allows us to beat the Quillava. So here I have set it so that our Ledeon has only one PP in Supersonic, and the idea here is that we're going to try to land a Supersonic turn one, and then hopefully just be able to struggle down the Ghastly, hopefully somehow have enough HP to take down that Quill Lava, and then maybe we level up and get Comet Punch in time for the final Zubat. Let's see if this works. So we land Supersonic there, we get a hit on in Confusion, very nice. And now Struggle did do decent damage, so we are able to take out the Ghastly very, very easily now. But now let's see how we do against Quill Lava, where we did exactly 6 damage. At 6 damage, this is a 9 hit KO range on this Quill Lava. And we're taking Recoil, and Ember did nearly half. <laughs> So just like that, it's pretty clear that there's no way that we can get through this fight with struggle strats. We don't do nearly enough damage to the Quill Lava, and since this is a max DV's Ledeon and it's still doing basically no damage, I think we just have to eliminate it. So that's our first Pokemon for today, gone. So with that, I think we need to try a different bug flying Pokemon. It's time to test out our Butterfree here, and this one might just have a better chance given its different moveset. So we've made it to Slowpoke well with our Butterfree, and let's see if it does a little bit better on these Rocket Grunts, given the fact that it has access to Confusion. So here it does appear to be a 3-hit KO on the Rattata, and of course Quick Attack will hit us first, but I think that if we can just get the luck to get a better range here, we can get through. Maybe a Berry helps in this one. So coming back with the Berry on, the idea is of course that we'll heal midway through the battle, of course, something like a Confusion could also manage to get us through, or a critical hit like that. And now we're on to the second Rattata, where I think we have enough turns in order to knock this one out. So just like that, easy victory, and we get to level 10. And here, unlike Ledeon, the fact that we have access to a super effective move actually makes this a lot easier. So here on the last Rocket Grunt, of course, his coughing isn't going to do that much to us, and we should easily be able to knock this one out with some Confusions. And now this becomes a kind of interesting case, because we might even be better off taking on Rival 2 before we take on Bugsy, but let's try the easy trainers in Bugsy's gym first. So here, let's just take on Bugsy one time. We're going to check the stats as we come in. 
We've got now a level 13 Butterfree with 43 HP. Confusion, Poison Powder is the move set. We've got 21 attack, 22 defense, 30 special attack, 30 special defense, and 28 speed. Let's just see if maybe we can get through here, especially because we don't really care about Harden. This might just be a spot where we have a chance. So here on Bugsy round number one, I'm just going to spam Confusion. I'm not even going to mess with Poison Powder unless I really think I need to for some reason. We get a nice tackle miss and we get through Metapod without any damage. Now he sends out his Scyther, starts setting up Fury Cutter. Now, of course, Fury Cutter could do decent damage, but there he goes Leer. Back to Fury Cutter for some reason. I don't really understand this decision by the AI, but he is building up damage. We just had to use our berry and he did knock us out with Fury Cutter there. So here on the second attempt, he actually sends out Kakuna first and Kakuna looks to be a two hit KO with confusion. Now we're back to the Scyther, but we've learned Stun Spore. Wait just a second, because if we can get Stun Spore, we're going to outspeed here. Plus, he could just have turns where he doesn't get a move, and that could be what we need to get through this. So here, we're just hoping that he doesn't hit the quick attacks and that he's fully paralyzed. Come on, we just needed like maybe one or two more turns of him being fully paralyzed or maybe a critical hit there. Here we get Scyther to hit itself in confusion twice and we do get through it. Now we level up to level 14. Kakuna comes out, but this should be a two hit KO. And just like that, we have managed to beat Bugsy with our Butterfree. And on top of that, we just learned Sleep Powder. So we actually have a move to use in order to get through rival number two. Let's see how this goes. And this is what I think really separates Butterfree from Ledeon. The fact that it gets access to these status moves. We're going to try attempt number one against rival two. So here I think the strategy against the Ghastly is just to go Confusion. And we knock it out in one hit. Well, Lava comes out, but we're going to go for Sleep Powder here. That first Ember did massive damage. But with it asleep, I think we have decent odds here. It does look like we might be in a 5 hit KO range at this point, and I did not put the berry on, so we are going to have to survive here. We also confuse the Quillava and we knock it out. We level up to level 16, and out comes Zubat, against whom it bites us, but two confusions knocks it out, and just like that, Butterfree is progressing in the minimum battle series. It has beaten Bugsy and Rival 2. So one thing that I can say for sure, status moves are insanely important. Getting access to Sleep Powder still is OP. The fact that Stun Spore at least gives us that extra chance that our opponent might not move for a turn, and the fact that we have a special attacking move, makes this Butterfree really not that bad. So I think it's going to have decent shots in the next section. We're just going to have to see. Of course, that rollout could be tough. But if we're able to just put the mill tank to sleep, we might just be able to whittle it down and get through that fight. Anyway, that does it for Butterfree. So let's check the results so far. And there we can see Ledeon has joined the fail column, but we have added up to the pass column, of course, our Butterfree. So now the question is, how do we do with these flying type Pokemon? I'm going to start off by running Pidgeot, Firo, and Noctowl and just seeing how they perform and then we'll step down through the Pidgey line to see how the rest of these flying Pokemon do. We should have some advantages when it comes to against Bugsy, but how will we fare against the rival? So for this section, let's lead off with Noctowl and I have to say, I think that these flying type Pokemon, especially the normal flying Pokemon, are some of the most improved in Gen 2, at least to my limited knowledge. In Gen 1, these Pokemon were absolute trash. But in Gen 2, the fact that the first badge not only gives you an attack boost, but also boosts the power of flying type moves helps these Pokemon a lot. Then in the second gym, they already have a massive type advantage. So there should be a way for these Pokemon to get through this section, I think. And if they do, it's going to be really interesting to see how far they go. So here with Noctowl coming into the Slowpoke well, I think we're going to just pretty well clean up here, but 
if we run into any problems we actually can learn both mud slap and swift here and that should give us enough coverage to basically get through anything now because of the extra boost from Faulkner's badge it is better to use peck than tackle here it should theoretically do a little bit more damage so here we do manage to get through the slowpoke well without too much difficulty we had a little bit of bad luck with some supersonics but really nothing to worry about we should get through that basically every time and at this point there's no real decision we just go straight to Bugsy's gym where we have a type advantage and let's see if we can take him down in fact I'm a, probably a bit overconfident but I'm gonna go in even without healing and just try Bugsy the first time so let's check the stats We've got a level 13 knocked owl with 53 HP. Same move set as before, but now 22 attack, 22 defense, 29 special attack, 34 special defense, and 28 speed. Let's see if we just mop up on the first attempt. So here against Metapod on the first attempt, it goes hardened, but we still two hit KO there. Now the Kakuna, we get a critical hit, and we can even just use tackle to finish that one off. We get to level 14. Now Scyther comes out goes for the fury cutter i think it's just hoping to build up enough power but i don't think it's gonna get there it's a three hit ko and we get to level 15 as we knock him out so just like that we made very quick work of bugsy and now it's just a matter of if we can get through our rival i'm gonna try him first just straight up and i'm just gonna go all in on attack we're not even gonna learn mud slap at this point a berry might be enough to get through here we'll just have to see so here, Rival 2, attempt number one. I'm simply gonna peck on this Ghastly. It appears to be a two-hit KO. Easy win right there. Now the Zubat comes out. and We're not really scared of this Pokemon. Can go for a bite, but it's still a three-hit KO there. Finally, Croconaw comes out. I'm gonna peck it once. Maybe we growl at it just to reduce its damage a little bit. We've got the Berry on, so theoretically, we should be able to heal up in the middle of the fight. It's not like it's water gun does massive damage here and we easily get through that fight now we get to learn hypnosis here in fact i'm gonna forget foresight because we have flying type same type attack bonus so when it comes to fighting against ghost type pokemon we should just be able to use our flying type moves we shouldn't really need to use foresight to be able to use them against ghost pokemon so we're just gonna forget that move for hypnosis and there we go we can progress in the game so really, I mean, Noctowl, just as good as I expected it to be. And I really don't think any of these fully evolved birds are going to fail. We could always be proven wrong. We could find something that we didn't expect. But at least in the case of Noctowl, its good special defense was more than enough to get through that Croconaw. So now let's go and check out Firo and see how it stacks up. So the interesting thing here with Firo will be to see how it stacks up given the fact that it's more offensively focused than that last Knocked Owl. Especially the fact that we have lower special defense could be an issue given that that Croconaw is going to use a special move in Water Gun. Knocked Owl was really taking advantage of the fact that it had better specials in order to get through that fight with relative ease. So here we're gonna watch Kurt run out of his house freaking out about the fact that our bird's about to peck his acorns but uh with that let's go ahead and just fight these rockets let's see how they actually go so here of course we have peck and we have fury attack now i'm not gonna put on the pink bow for now i'm just gonna go with the pecks and just see how they go in this situation looks like a two hit ko there on the ratata so we're getting better damage ranges here all said and the fact that we have plenty of berries this should be a pretty easy section to get through we're just gonna peck down James here and we just easily get through the slowpoke well. So now we just wanna make our way on to Bugsy where we should have the advantage and we should be able to take this gym out without too much difficulty. And Firo is just one-shotting all of the Pokemon on the way to Bugsy here. So we just gotta get in front of him and check the stats as we come into this. So coming into the Bugsy fight, we have a level 13 Firo with 44 HP. Peck, Growl, Leer, and Fury Attack is the moveset. We've got 33 Attack, 26 Defense, 25 Special Attack, 25 Special Defense, and a nice 35 Speed. So Bugsy, round one, I'm just gonna use Peck. Does about 75% on the Metapod, and we knock it out in two hits. Out comes the Scyther, goes for Fury Cutter, but this Peck's just gonna do way too much damage. We get a critical hit and knock it out in two turns. Now out comes Kakuna, 
who never had a shot and we easily win and get ourselves the hive badge so now it's just a matter of how we do against rival 2 we can just take a quick heal throw on a berry and i think that's all we need to do to get through this fight but let's just see so here we are rival 2 attempt number one i'm gonna peck on the ghastly it's going to be a two hit ko he uses fight but that really just doesn't mean anything zubat comes out and does confuse us that's kind of bad but it is a two hit ko outside of that out comes croconaw let's even leer at this croconaw real quick just to get its own defense down okay we traded leers now we can go for the pecs we get a critical hit but we get knocked out there but that was clearly just because we hit ourselves like two or three times in confusion in that fight let's try this again so here in the second attempt once again we're just gonna get a nice two hit ko on ghastly out comes the zubat and it go oh, again lands the supersonic that's kind of ridiculous but we do two shot it we're on to Croconaw on full health. We're no longer confused. Water Gun does about 10 damage per hit here. He gets a critical hit to do 20 there. But I think we've got him right here. One more hit. And just like that, we take the Croconaw out. Firo joins the win column. It was never really in question. I mean, he just got really lucky on the first attempt with us hitting ourselves so many times in confusion. But without the confusion, I mean, he just really didn't have a shot against this flying type Pokemon. Now the question is, how do we do with our Pidgeot? Of course, Pidgeot has access to accuracy strats in the form of sand attack. It doesn't even need to add Mud Slap to just start trolling the opponent. But uh, is that what we really want to do? Or is it just strong enough to get through just fighting straight up? Let's find out. So overall, Pidgeot has far more balanced stats than the Spearow. And it's also going to be in the medium slow level up group. So it's going to be able to get to a higher level in this section. So honestly, if any of these birds are going to do really great here, it's probably Pidgeotto. Now it is worth noting that in all my experience doing minimum battles runs, in a lot of cases, these level up groups are trumped by movesets. I've never found a situation where a Pokemon was necessarily going to be much better just because it had a faster level up rate. In most cases, it came down to what moves it learned. And yes, there can be some random cases. And yes, there can be some cases where a Pokemon learns a really key move. And the fact that it's in a certain level up group allows it to get there before a major opponent. But most of the time in minimum battles runs, you would simply use rare candies in order to bridge those gaps. Because the difference between one or two levels at the end of the game isn't typically a massive difference. But... When you're talking about the difference in movesets, one Pokemon having better moves than the other is a massive advantage. And I think the fact that Pidgeot does not get a move like Drill Peck does make it necessarily a little bit inferior to Firo the longer we go in this challenge. But we'll have to see if that turns out to be the case or not. For now, we're going to make our way to Azalea, where we can make our way straight into this Slowpoke well and see if we can beat up these rockets. So here with Gust, these Rattatas are two hit KOs, and the fact that we're at a higher level just means that we're doing significantly more damage anyway, plus we get to level up to level 12 right there. So sure enough, we just sweep through all the rockets with no difficulty whatsoever. We can have Kurt just come and congratulate us on how great our bird is. I mean, Faulkner was jealous of our cherished bird. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into the Bugsy Gym. Let's just clean up all these trainers and check the stats as we go into the Bugsy fight. So here standing right in front of Bugsy, the stats of our Pidgeotto, we're at level 15, 55 HP. We have Gust, Sand Attack, Quick Attack, and Tackle on the moveset. We've got 34 Attack, 33 Defense, 31 in both Specials, and 38 Speed. We can even get a Quick Attack to just outspeed an opponent if we just need one last little hit to knock them out. But let's see how this goes. I think we just crush Bugsy here. So here against this Metapod, Gust is not quite a one hitter, but it was very close. A tackle will just finish that one off. We get to level 16 now. So Gust on Kakuna, also just barely not a one hit KO, but we can easily finish it off there. And now Scyther goes for the Fury Cutter. We can just go for Gust, which did about half. It's a two hitter there. And we get to level 17 easy victory but that one was never really in question the only real question is how do we do against our rival and 
Rival 2, I mean, he should be not too bad given that Gust can hit the Ghastly, but let's just make sure that our specials are enough to get through this fight. So first up, the Ghastly, we're just going to use Gust, and we get put to sleep by Hypnosis. Now, of course, Ghastly cannot directly damage a Pidgeot because we're a normal type Pokemon and its only damaging move is Lick. So it's just going to sit here and spam Spite on us while we're asleep. But there we do knock it out. Zubat comes out next. We'll just stick with the gusts here. It's going to be a two hit KO. Now we finally have the Croconaw coming out. And it looks like we did 16 damage. So this is going to be a four hit range here without a crit. He goes Rage. Good job. Oh yeah, keep using your Rage, buddy. Quick attack. And we get the easy victory against our rival. So I don't think that fight was ever really in question. We kind of knew that we were just going to come in and sweep up with this Pidgeot. But now we have to step down through the evolutionary line. Of course, Hoot Hoot and Spiro did not manage to even beat Faulkner on minimum battles, so they're already eliminated. But we did get through with Pidgeotto and Pidgey thanks to their accuracy strats. So now let's see if Pidgeotto can keep up with its evolved form and crush this section of the game. Now I will say I always really loved Pidgeotto, obviously was one of Ash Ketchum's Pokemon in the anime, and in Pokemon Yellow when they added this Pokemon to Viridian Forest I was stoked. The fact that I could just catch it and use it in, all the way from the beginning of the game, it was the only wild Pokemon in that section that was level 9, I was just always going to get access to the Pidgeotto before the first gym, and after that I would just basically use it way more than anybody probably should have given how bad it actually was in the first generation. As a kid I just wanted to do what the anime did. I was disappointed they didn't give us sprinklers to beat Brock with our Pikachu, but you know, you kind of just had to take what you got. But here I think Pidgeotto will be much better in this generation. We've already shown that it easily gets through Faulkner, but now Bugsy should be another easy gym. The only question is about Rival 2, and I think that's really only going to become an issue on the Pidgey. We're going to have to progress to this point in the game anyway. So some people have asked, why don't you just do the unevolved form first? Because if you beat him with the unevolved form, then you know that you get the rest of them through. Well, you still have to get all those other Pokemon to the same point in the game anyway. So I prefer to do it from the fully evolved form and step down, even when I know that those are going to be really easy fights because then we're already where we need to be when we pick up in the next section. And it seems like every time I start explaining something, I run into one of these trainers. Fortunately, we can just save and reset, but it's kind of annoying, these spinners, I will not lie. But now we've got Pidgeotto in Azalea Town. We're just gonna run down in the well. So here, we're just gonna lead off with the gusts in this section. We're still basically two hit KOing these Rattatas here. So I don't foresee any issues as we go through this section. And with all of these rockets going down so easily, we know that we've already got the first two trainers in Bugsy's gym in the bag. So let's just pick up right at the Bugsy fight. So now time for Bugsy. We have a level 15 Pidgeotto with 49 HP. Gust, Sand Attack, Tackle, and Quick Attack is the move set. We've got 28 Attack, 27 Defense, 25 in both specials, and 32 Speed. I'm just going to slap on a berry just to be safe, but I just don't see any way we ever lose this fight, so let's just find out how many hits it takes. Here, Bugsy attempts number one. I'm just going to go Gust, and it's going to be a two-hit KO here on the Metapod. We get a String Shot. I don't think that really matters. Gust here on the Kakuna is almost a one-hitter as well. We'll just quick attack it down. And now out comes Scyther against whom I think we just used Gust. It's going to be a three hit KO from the looks of it, but Fury Cutter and Quick Attack just aren't enough. We easily knock him out. So with the Hive Badge in the bag, let's just go take on our rival and see if he's just as easy as he was with Pidgeot. Here for rival two, attempt to number one, I'm just going to go Gust on the Ghastly. It's a two hit KO. He misses a Hypnosis. Very nice. Zubad comes out where we get confused. That's kind of bad, but we hit the Gust and get the two head range and level up to level 18. Now let's go Gust here on the Croconaw. And we just did, looks like 15 damage. So this is gonna be a four hit KO range without a critical hit. 
but fortunately it doesn't look like he's doing that much damage we heal up with the berry but it's just in time for us to knock him out anyway so Pidgeotto another member of the pass column we have gotten all of these birds through so far now we will need to be worried as we progress in the game a little bit because some trainers when we think about Jasmine when we think about Chuck with neutral damage at least when we think about even Whitney with her rollouts could be tough for these flying types we're just gonna have to find out I think that Pidgeotto will have a shot in the next section given that it can use the sand attacks against the mill tank that might just be what it needs in order to get through that fight but with that done let's check out how Pidgey does in this section so now we're gonna show Kurt up with our little Pidgey as we go into all these rockets we do have Gust on the move set right now so what we can do is simply move that into the top slot and we're gonna use Gust where it appears to be a two hit KO on these Rattatas yet again so I think it's just gonna be strong enough between the badge boost from Faulkner and the fact that it's the same type move I think we're just gonna crush things down here and sure enough there's just no difficulty whatsoever even for a Pidgey in this section and now we can take on some really easy fights so let's just go and get these trainers done and get to the Bugsy fight which is the obvious routing for this Pokemon now somebody asked in the comments who which Pokemon had the lowest base stat total that got through Faulkner I would not be surprised if it was actually this Pidgey on the one hand yes it was at a higher level because it's in the medium slow level up group but in terms of actual base stats this is probably the weakest Pokemon that we were able to beat him with and it all came down to accuracy strats but with that being done we can now get to Bugsy where we have a level 15 Pidgey with 42 HP Gust, Sand Attack, Tackle and Quick Attack is the move set 24 Attack, 22 Defense, 20 in both Specials, 27 Speed it's basically the exact same spread as our evolved forms just a little bit weaker let's see if we can manage to beat this one just as easily as we did with Pidgeotto and Pidgeot so here against Bugsy Gust on the Metapod does over half and even after a Harden it is a two hit KO he sends out Scyther we're gonna be slower but it looks to be a three hit KO here and with that we should easily be able to get through this one because what is Kakuna really going to do against us when it gets that massive gust right at the start? No chance. We have beaten Bugsy. And yet again, it just comes down now to rival number two. But we're always going to have an advantage with any of these normal type Pokemon in the sense that as long as we have a move that can hit his ghastly, we don't have to worry about taking damage from it. And that should give us basically one free win and then we only have to knock out two other Pokemon. So let's see how it goes with our Pidgey here. So rival two attempt number one, Gust, critical hit one shots the Ghastly, very nice. Zubat comes out and here it's gonna go for Supersonic. He's clearly going for the status as his strategy, but we snap out of confusion and knock him out, get to level 18. And now Gust is looking like it did about 12 damage there. So at 12 damage, this would be a five hit KO on this Croconaw. Let's see, it's doing about 12 damage per hit with its water gun. So we might just barely be able to get through. Yes, with five HP remaining, we beat him on the first attempt with our Pidgey. And now we have to stop its evolution. We're gonna have to get that Everstone at some point in order to keep our Pokemon from just randomly evolving as we're fighting some of these like random overworld trainers and whatnot. I may just give myself an Everstone just to prevent myself from accidentally evolving in some spots. But with that being said, Pidgey, perfectly fine for this section. It's crushed Faulkner. It's now crushed Bugsy and Rival 2. The only question is, can it get through Whitney? We'll check that out in the next section. But with that, let's just save the game and check the progress so far. So for the first 20 Pokemon that we have attempted on this section of the game, only three have failed. The other 17 have passed, most of them pretty easily, honestly. A lot easier than I was expecting. I was expecting Rival 2 and Bugsy to put up more of a fight, but it seems like they're mostly just walling Pokemon that didn't really have good movesets or didn't have the stats to get through this section. But I mean, even a Pidgey gets through here, with really, really easy victories. 
That being said, it's now time to check out some different types of Pokemon because I mean, we have been beating up on Bugsy at this point with flying types. Literally every Pokemon we've run so far has the flying type on it. Now let's see if we take that away. We stop having some advantages. Will we start to have any sort of struggles here? Well, first things first, let's check out Furret up against our Raticate. These two normal types may not have the moves that they need in order to get through Rival 2. Might have to go with some sort of mud slap strats. Let's see how it goes. So we haven't seen a whole lot of the pink bow so far in this episode, but now is where I think we start adding it on. Because clearly Furret as a normal type Pokemon benefits an awful lot from having a slight boost on top of its normal same type attack bonus to its normal type moves. We also get some interesting TMs here like Fury Cutter. Of course, we can learn Swift. So there are a lot of options if we run into any walls. So now we're going to come and talk to Kurt and we're going to tell him that we have a ferret that kind of likes to munch on nuts. He's going to say, all right, I'm running away to the Slowpoke well, but we follow him there. And man, he just goes right on down. So unfortunately, while he takes a knee right there, we're going to just come in here and beat up these rockets and prove to him that Furret is the one. So here, obviously, Scratch and Quick Attack have the same damage, but we may as well just use Quick Attack. It guarantees that we hit first, even when the Rattatas use it, so we can just easily knock them down. Here, we shouldn't really foresee any major troubles in this section. We can just simply hold down Auto A on Quick Attack. Maybe he'll manage to poison us or something, but I don't think it's really going to matter. He gets a critical hit there, but then he misses the next attack, and it's an easy victory. So Kurt's going to uh, go ahead and heal us up and we're just going to run back out and go straight to Bugsy's gym. We're going to have to either add a TM or go for some struggle strats to get through rival number two. Obviously, Mud Slap is the main solution there. But first, let's just take on these trainers so we get a higher level. So just like that, we have made our way to Bugsy. Let's check the stats on our Furret. We're at level 13 with 49 HP. We're holding the pink bow and we've got scratch, defense, curl, and quick attack. We have 29 attack, 26 defense, 21 special attack, 23 special defense, and 33 in speed. I think we've got this. I think we're just going to outspeed everything and we do decent damage, but let's see how it goes against Bugsy on round one. So first things first, the quick attack is going to have this one looking like a three hit KO, but he does harden there which is a bit of an issue, something that we didn't really have to deal with with any of the birds, but we do get through that Metapod there. Now let's come into the Kakuna and we get a nice critical hit there. A scratch will just finish it off. Now we have to take on the Scyther where I'm going to go quick attack as it sets up Fury Cutter and we are doing about nine damage per hit. So we would need three more hits to knock this one out. So we might have just found a potential issue. Now, one thing that we can go for, of course, is the defense curl strats. Obviously, if we set up a bunch of defense curls early on in the fight, it should mean that physical attacks do less damage to us as we progress. So here we are taking a lot more tackles from this Metapod, but maybe that's worth it if we're taking a lot less damage from the Fury Cutter as it builds up. So in this one, we did get poisoned by the Kakuna, and I'm not quite sure because Fury Cutter, of course, it increases its damage every time. But if he's already doing very little damage, does it even care about our defense boost? That's something that I want to investigate a little bit more because it might be a situation where the defense boosts actually don't do anything for us. So there is a possibility that we should investigate right away, which is that we can simply learn the move Swift. Swift is a same type attack move, and it's stronger than both of our other moves. It's effectively a 50% power increase, and this might be what we need to get through this one. So here I'm going to put Swift in the top slot and simply spam it. It's a two hit KO now on the Metapod, and it's looking like a similar range on the Kakuna. It did use a Harden, but we get through just fine right there. Now on Scyther, let's just see. He sets up the first Fury Cutter. But now this is looking almost like it's just short of a four hit range. If we were to get really, really lucky ranges or maybe a critical hit at the end, we could win this fight now. But let's not sit here and just grind, grind, grind. 
because I think we might be able to get through Rival 2 easier if we just add Mudslap to the moveset in order to take down the Ghastly. So we'll simply learn Mudslap over Scratch since Quick Attack and Scratch are the same power. You'd always want to use Quick Attack anyway. And let's see how we do against Rival 2. So here in this one, I'm going to lead off with the Mud Slaps against this Ghastly. It's looking like a three hit KO, but it is an easy victory. Nothing done there. Now we can go Swift on this Zubat and it's a two hitter. And we're on to the Croconaw against whom Water Gun does decent damage, but we're doing good damage back to it with Swift. And we get through Rival 2 on the first attempt. So easy victory right there. We could debate whether I should have gone up against the Bayleaf rival there, but I think this is basically fine. So let's try Bugsy again after beating our rival and just see if we can get better ranges here. So he goes for a Harden, so that's going to make this a three hit KO on the Metapod, but we level up to level 15. Now we can easily knock down the Kakuna in two turns and that's on to the Scyther against whom I'm going to lead off with the Swift. He gets a critical hit Fury attack, but now this is looking like a three hit KO and we easily managed to get through Bugsy. So this is a situation where actually fighting Rival 2 first is better than going straight to Bugsy, just given the fact that we didn't have quite enough power to get through his whole team. But with that, we can progress with Furret. So I think Furret's going to have a pretty smooth run overall, but it could hit some walls at some spots. I mean, Chuck's going to be no joke. Neither is Jasmine. But if we can get through those, we might just have a chance. With that being said, let's save the game and now check if Raticate can do what Furret has done. So Raticate, I have to admit, is one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 1. Not because it was strong, but just because it had some signature moves that I thought were really interesting. The fact that it could use Hyper Fang really early in the game and flinch opponents with the same type move that just felt super OP at that point was always awesome to me. And then add on the fact that later in the game it learned Super Fang, so the only move that can just guarantee to do 50% damage to an opponent. I always just loved that setup. I would lead off with the Raticate and just cut an opponent's HP in half. And then the fact that this Pokemon can learn so many TMs in Gen 1, it has so much type coverage. Doesn't matter that it's strong or not strong, it's definitely not very good. But it was strong enough after you cut their HP in half twice that you could easily get through a lot of different opponents. Super Fang was just legitimately awesome. So here in Azalea, we're just gonna come take on Rad Boy with a bigger rat. I don't think he has a shot. So here quick attack does about half damage so it's a two hit KO on the Raditas here and yet again this is just a Pokemon that shouldn't struggle in this section. I'm beginning to wonder if we'll have anything that truly struggles on these rockets. Basically they're just cannon fodder to give us free levels before we have to take on our rival 2 and Bugsy. And this is something that we might see as we progress in the game that more and more Random trainers just don't really matter, and it's really the gym leaders that matter, especially here in Pokemon Crystal. There just aren't a whole lot of these rando trainers that ever put fear into my heart when I do a run, because they're typically under leveled compared to opponents that you would run into in Pokemon Yellow, for example, in Gen 1, where they have at least relatively similar levels to the player most of the time when you're staying on minimum battles. And that was actually one of the reasons I didn't really like Gen 2 when it originally came out. I just kept running into trainers that would have like a level 2 Pokemon and saying, why would they have a level 2 Pokemon? Like, why not give me an opponent that has a decent level so that I can actually gain some decent XP off of them? It always just felt a little bit more tedious grinding for levels in this version. Granted, this is way before they started doing like adjusted XP curves where if you over leveled too much, you would get even less XP from wild Pokemon and things like that. So I guess I can't complain too much, but compared to Gen 1, it just always felt like the opponents were too weak compared to you. And this section's kind of bringing that back to me. So here we beat our Parisian friend and we did level up enough to get access to Hyper Fang. And that is pretty awesome. I think this move is going to be so good here in this fight against Bugsy. 
Let's just see how it goes though. So coming into the Bugsy fight, we now have a level 13 Raticate with 42 HP. Pink Bow is the held item and we've got Quick Attack, Tail Whip, Tackle and Hyper Fang. And we've got 31 attack, 25 defense, 22 special attack, 27 special defense, and 35 speed. I think we got this, guys. We're just gonna Hyper Fang him down. Let's go. So here against the Metapod, Hyper Fang does not do as much as I thought it would do. <laughs> I actually thought that that would do a lot more damage. Now we can get a flinch or something. It's a two hitter there on the Kakuna, even after a Harden. And now let's just see on Scyther, he goes Quick Attack. Now he goes Fury Cutter. But we should just be able to win just like that and get to level 15 with our Raticate. Very, very nice. So now it's all just about rival number two. And let's see if we can find a way through him here. Obviously, the main solution is to learn Mud Slap. And we're going to learn Mud Slap over Tackle since it's inferior in every way to our other moves. Let's just try this fight one time. So first things first, against the Rivals Ghastly, I'm just going to use a Mud Slap. It's going to be a two hit KO. We get put to sleep here and he can only use Spite on us while we're asleep. Fortunately, we wake up before we run out of Mud Slaps. Now out comes the Zubat. We can Hyper Fang it. That's a one hit KO. And on Croconaw, let's go for the Hyper Fang. It looks to be a three hitter here. If we can just land the hits, and he's on low health, so a quick attack finishes it off. Level 16, Raticate has beaten both Rival 2 and Bugsy. It was really not hard at all. So I just think that these evolved normal types are at least going to have decent chances as they go through. We can see the moveset that's been flashing up in the top right, that there's just tons of coverage for these Pokemon. And the fact that they can mix coverage with decent speed, with good stab, I mean, what more could you really want? Yes, they're not going to be the strongest Pokemon in terms of base stats, but I think they have a chance to go at least pretty deep in this challenge. So with that, let's just see how many Pokemon we've gotten through so far. We are up to 19 challengers passing through Bugsy and Rival 2, and only three challengers failing. But now it's time to take on our very first Poison type. We're going to be coming with the Arbok, and this could be kind of interesting. We're going to need to get that poison barb just in case we need to do some extra damage. And we're going to have to see if we have a way to get through this section. So here as we come into the slowpoke well, I think we're going to be relying a lot on bite here. But there are some spots where maybe if we just need a little more luck, we might go for poison strats even. But let's lead off with bite as our main strategy here. It looks to be a three hit KO on this Rattata, and of course, Bite can flinch opponents. So we just have to hope that we can hopefully get through this within a reasonable number of attempts. And now, obviously, in any fight where we're not using the move Poison Sting, we should basically just put on a berry that's going to allow us to heal midway through the battle. It should be the better strategy. Now, fortunately, the fact that we resist poison type moves makes this section fairly easy to get through. We even get a flinch here on the coughing, and we are up to level 12 as we finish the Slowpoke well. So here as we prepare for our first attempt against Bugsy, we have a level 13 Arbok with 43 HP, Bite, Leer, Poison Sting, and Wrap. We're going to give it a berry before this fight. And we are coming in with 32 attack, 27 defense, 26 special attack, 30 special defense, and 30 in speed. So let's just see if with a berry, it's enough to get through this fight easily. So first things first, on the Metapod, we can even go Poison Sting here and at least poison it. And I always forget that in Gen 2, poison is not really super effective here against these bugs. But now we can move on to the Kakuna against whom we can flinch it once. We can flinch it twice and easily get the victory. Now it's on the Scyther. And this is the spot where maybe getting poison on it could help us. So we just poisoned it right there. And now it goes quick attack. I'm going to bite as he goes into a fury cutter. And we're just hoping to kind of whittle him down. And just like that, we beat him on the first attempt thanks to the poison chip damage. I think without that chip damage, he would have knocked us out on the next turn. I don't know that we would have gotten through without a critical hit. But fortunately, we got the poison with Poison Sting. That is the advantage of the move. And easily, we're able to get through that one. 
So now we have to move on to rival two, but I don't think we're really in that bad a shape. Here again is the first ghastly. We're simply gonna bite it. And for some reason you can bite ghosts. So uh, it goes down in one hit. Now Zubat comes out. We're just gonna keep spamming the bites right here. We get an easy victory. And now Croconaw comes out. Maybe we can poison it with a poison sting. Sure, let's just give her a wrap so that gets a little extra chip damage maybe. And now I guess we just start bite biting. And it's not like our bite is super strong here or anything, but we heal with the berry and knock it out and we get to level 16. So Arbok, another Pokemon that had absolutely no difficulty in this section whatsoever. And really, we're just kind of seeing that this might not be that big of a challenge. That being said, we are getting through with evolved Pokemon and we have to keep in mind that a lot of the Pokemon that failed on Faulkner probably fail here too. Like think about the types of Pokemon that would struggle against Faulkner. We're talking about especially grass types. Well, grass types are going to be bad here against the bug gym as well, but they're already eliminated, so they don't get the chance to get knocked out by this gym. So it may just turn out that in some cases, Bugsy just doesn't really put in much work here. We'll have to see as we progress, but I'm starting to believe that this section is easier than we initially anticipated. Granted, there are some cases where maybe it's just the Bayleaf rival that is the real major challenge. So just like that, we have gotten now 20 Pokemon through this section, and we're moving on to our electric types. We've got Raichu, Pikachu, and Pichu coming up, and we're going to lead off with the Raichu, which started out with a completely OP moveset. I believe it had Thunderbolt at level 5. So this one might be easy, but we got to kind of set the pace and see what it's going to look like for our unevolved forms. And you get some moments like these where I realize that I didn't save when I had beaten Faulkner before. But of course, it's just two one hit KOs with the Raichu, so we easily get through. And now we can progress in this next section where nothing resists electric. So I think we're just going to have an easy time getting through all these trainers. So first up, we're just going to make our way through this slowpoke well. I'm not sure it's even worth talking about, so I'm just going to hold the auto away on Thunderbolt and probably just win. Even on the final rocket grunt, we're two shotting the coughing and it's an easy victory as we get to level 12. So now we're just going to let Kurt teleport us out of here and we're going to just go beat up on Bugsy's gym. But this is the question. Do we want to take on Bugsy first or should we at least try our rival? I'm going to mix things up a little bit. Let's try rival two one time first just to see how he goes. So here on the Ghastly, Thunderbolt is not quite a one hitter, but we are going to two shot. I'll just use Thundershock to finish it off. Out comes Bayleaf, where Thunderbolt is not very effective, of course. And we actually kind of have a problem here because Razor Leaf is going to do decent damage. We might either need to paralyze it or get a miss from Razor Leaf. So it is clear that at this level, we cannot get through that fight, at least not reliably. But we can just come in here to Bugsy's gym and get some easy XP. Now this Paris might be one Pokemon that kind of walls us given that it is a grass type, but it still looks to be a three hit KO here with Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is the strongest move, even though it's resisted. So we get to level 13. We can save the game right here. Let's just make our way past this trainer and take on Bugsy. So coming into the Bugsy fight, Raichu is at level 13 with 43 HP. We've got Thunderbolt, Tail Whip, Quick Attack, and Thundershock. I don't think we're using any normal type moves, so I'm just going to stick with the berry here. We've got 33 attack, 24 defense, 33 special attack, 30 special defense, and 35 in speed. I think this is more than enough, so let's just get the AEC XP and then try our rival again. So here Bugsy attempt number one, Thunderbolt one shots the Metapod, Thunderbolt one shots the Kakuna, out comes the Scyther, goes for a Fury Cutter, but Thunderbolt, oh, is not a one hitter, but Quick Attack does finish the job. So kind of disappointing. We did not get the one hit sweep there. That would have been pretty cool. But either way, we've gotten through that fight. Now against Rival 2, we're going to heal up first and see if we can just get a better range now. Now after the fact that we've gained a couple levels. But if not, we also have the Swift TM in the bag. 
which will boost the amount of damage that we're doing when we hit that bay leaf with a normal type move so here rival two attempt number two thunderbolt right there is an easy one hit ko out comes the bay leaf and i'm going to start off with a thunderbolt maybe we can paralyze it yes he poisons us but i'm gonna give him a tail whip right here and now just go into some quick attack spam and maybe we can just make this one work we heal up with the berry right there and he just manages to knock us out clearly that was because of the poison but let's see if we can get a better attempt right here so once again ghastly is never a factor in this fight he's always a one hit ko we get reflect from the bay leaf but it's looking like a five hit ko here with thunderbolt so if he doesn't crit i think we've got this we heal with the berry and now even quick attack will knock that one out out comes the zubat and here thunderbolt is more than enough to finish that fight so raichu does get through rival number two but we should note that we're using a super powerful move in thunderbolt thunderbolt is 95 base power and it's the same type move and so while yes on the one hand it is resisted by the bayleaf on the other hand we're using our best possible move and it is stronger than basically anything else we could use it's 1.5 times 95 so effectively about 137 base power and then you cut that in half you're still talking nearly 70 base power as opposed to a move like swift which is only 60 base power so this might be a spot where we got through with the raichu but pikachu and Pichu might not have any shot whatsoever. Let's find out. Now, of course, Pikachu in Gen 2 has a signature held item. I believe it's the light ball. We're not gonna mess with that in these minimum battles runs. I will come back and look at something like that when we do a full game solo run with this Pokemon on zero DVs, because at that point, it could be really interesting to see how an item like that affects it. In general, for these, we're just running vanilla versions of the Pokemon. Unless we're doing something special for a channel member, just because we really want to answer the question without any re weird shenanigans or whatever, how many of these Pokemon are actually capable of doing minimum battles? So while yes, I know that there is a special item that could potentially help this one get through, we're not going to just throw that on and test it out at this point now what i do think we test in this section though is the swift tm combined with the pink bow just because it may give us enough damage output to get through some opponents and then we might just have to test out how we do if we paralyze opponents we might just be able to get through on a lucky run if we just get some paralysis but starting here in the slowpoke well i'm not quite as confident how we're going to do against these rocket grunts so let's see the first one right here where of course we have Thundershock is our only damage dealing move. We get a nice paralysis right there though. And it is looking like a three hit KO on these Rattatas. Granted, they have quick attacks. So even if we are paralyzing them, they can move first and knock us out. So here, unfortunately, we basically need a berry to have a decent shot against these Pokemon. We even get a critical hit there from this first Rattata that took us down below half health. And even with the berry here, we're finding that we're having tons of trouble on this trainer. Already 12 resets on the first rocket in this section. This is kind of ridiculous because he just keeps getting the last hit on us with quick attack. We finally got through there, but that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was stupid. Pikachu, come on. You were supposed to be better than this. You were supposed to be like the series mascot or something. So here, let's take on Jesse Jr. and see how this one goes. We finally have some fights to talk about. <laughs> so fortunately, the Zubat is a two hit KO. We can move on to Ekans against whom I guess we get leered. I don't really think we fear anything too much, though. Rap's not that strong and we can just sit here and paralyze it as we also slam it with some Thundershocks. So that was an easy victory. Now let's see how we do against Rat Bat Boy. <laughs> Where here on this fight, I think the Rattata is actually the scariest Pokemon, but we just have to keep just auto weighing on this move. So here we can learn Quick Attack. I'm going to go at, oh, I've learned Quick Attack over the wrong move, rip. Sorry, that will cause a reset there, but 
obviously we beat Jesse Jr. very, very easily. So I don't think this one is a major issue. Oh, just hit yourself in confusion every single turn, Pikachu. Oh, this is turning out to be a terrible section. So now we can take on Bad Rat Boy again, and hopefully we don't get that crazy bad confusion luck this time so that we can actually win. So here we level up, we get Quick Attack. We're going to learn it over Growl. And now let's see how we do in this section. So Thundershock is still a two hit KO here on the Zubat. And on the second Zubat, Thundershock. And we can even go for a quick attack, I think, and just finish it off. Very nice. So here on the final Rocket Grunt, James Coffin in the corner. Let's just see if we can manage to beat him on the first attempt. Poison Gas does poison us, which is kind of bad, but we get a Paralysis, so that's kind of good. We're doing decent damage here, so I think we've got this one in the bag. So just like that, Pikachu gets to level 12. We've beaten the Slowpoke well, but that was harder than it definitely has been with basically every Pokemon so far. So that's got me a little nervous. We're going to go straight into the Bugsy Gym and let's take on these trainers, but I'm not sure they're actually going to be easy. We get poisoned turn one from the Spinarak and then we get our speed lowered. Out comes Letty Buff. Fortunately, we have a type advantage here, so it is a two hit KO. After that, we're here to say wee wee to our friend Joshua, who's running the Paris. I'm going to paralyze it first, just for the sake of doing so, and I'm going to give it a couple tail whips before we go into the quick attacks here. And hopefully we do enough damage. Nope, he knocks us out. So here it looks like he's a four hit KO now with quick attack. We don't have any turns where we're fully paralyzed and we easily win that fight. So just like that, Pikachu has made it to Bugsy on minimum battles. We're at level 13 with 36 HP. Thundershock, quick attack, tail whip and thunder wave is the moveset with the pink bow on. And we've got 24 attack, 17 defense, 22 special attack, 20 special defense and 33 speed. I'm not sure we want the pink bow though. We might actually want to give a berry here because we don't really have any major situations where we'd want to use normal moves in this fight. So let's just try the berry and see how it goes. So here on Bugsy's Metapod, I'm just going to use Thundershock. It appears to be a three hit KO even after the crit. We just didn't manage to knock that one out. Here against the Kakuna, it's looking like a very similar range, somewhere between three and four hits to knock this one out. We get it down right there and it's on to the Scyther against whom I'm going to go Thunder Wave first. Let's get the speed advantage here. And here we get a hill up with the berry, but he's doing tons and tons of damage. So I think we need him to be fully paralyzed for a turn. Or maybe it was better just to go all in on attack. So let's test that just very quickly here. So here we paralyze the Metapod turn one. And it's just going for tackle, but it's a three hitter right there. Onto the Kakuna, uses Harden, which doesn't really matter, and we get a crit to knock it out. Now onto the Scyther, goes for Fury Cutter. I'm just going to spam my Thundershock. He got a critical hit Fury Cutter there, and then he just knocks us out. Okay, so maybe no crit from him is all we need in order to get through this. So at this point, I do think we need the Paralysis on this Pokemon. And hopefully to get one or two turns where it doesn't manage to hit us due to the fact that it's using one or two turns that it doesn't hit us where it, due to paralysis. But here he just inexplicably used the Leer and we win. <laughs> what is this? And now we get a level up and we get to learn double team. Are you kidding me? Oh, we're going to learn the double team. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I know people do not like double team. I understand it. I do. Pure evasion tactics aren't necessarily that great, especially in Gen 2 where these moves have been nerfed anyway. But I think this gives us a better chance as we go into Rival 2. So let's just try this and see if we can manage a win. So here against Rival 2, I'm going to start off by just trying to go all in on attack. Let's just see. So Thundershock did very close to half, just short of half against this ghastly could be a matter of ranges i'm not sure but here we're just getting licked down pikachu he he doesn't like being licked guys out comes bayleaf and here we get the paralysis turn one but i'm sure we're gonna see that we basically do no damage like the quick attack appears to do six damage here which means this is a nine hit ko range against this pokemon we're getting tons and tons of paralysis 
but then it just knocks us out. So I think the only strategy that makes any sense here is to go for the double team strat. In this case, what we do, of course, is we're going to try to set up the double teams here on the Ghastly, since it does use some inaccurate moves, like Spite, of course, it can use, which does no damage. Hypnosis might just miss us. And all we need to do is get to plus six evasion and now go into the Thundershocks. We get a Paralysis there, and that is a two hit KO. Now here we have the Bayleaf. I'm just going to paralyze it first because that adds another chance that it won't hit us for a turn. And now I'm just going to spam the quick attacks. It goes for reflect. So there I think we don't really have a clearer option of what to do, whether we should go quick attack or we should go for the Thundershock. So I'm just going to spam quick attack, I guess. Let's keep the Thundershocks for the final Zubat. But in this case, we do manage to knock out the Bayleaf on the first attempt after using the strategy. And now we just go Thundershock here on the Zubat. Two hits, easy victory. So that is a situation where, like I said, we probably don't deserve to get through. <laughs> like, Let's make that clear. But double team is a level up move. And for me personally, we can debate this. We can we can have this fight. I've had this fight over on RBY Pokemon challenges many, many times. As far as I'm concerned, if it's on the level of move set, even if it's a completely broken move, it's fair game because that was designed specifically onto that Pokemon by the developers of the game. They decided at this level, this Pokemon will learn this move. So I'd never penalize Pokemon for level up moves and I never restrict myself from using a level up move. And in this case, it was probably the only strategy that was going to get this Pikachu through. So, hey, if you don't like it, just just tell me down in the comments how much you don't like it. That's fine. I, I get you. I get you. I understand. So now that we've learned that Pikachu actually has plot armor, even in Gen 2, <laughs> let's try its unevolved form. So I just have to remind myself. So Pichu had Thundershock, Charm, Tail Whip, and Thunder Wave. But what is its level up moveset? Is there a level up moveset? So we're going to learn Sweet Kiss at level 11. But outside of that, there are no level up moves on this Pokemon. We're not going to get double team in this one. This could be very, very interesting. We do learn Mud Slap, so we could go for some crazy Mud Slap strats, but that's about it. And I guess Swift in order to deal more damage. Okay, so I'm already pretty much predicting that Pichu will fail in this section of the game. I just don't see much chance of it getting through. It could always surprise us though, so I guess we can't just count it out just yet. So first things first, we have to see if Pichu can even make it through the rocket grunts. Given how much trouble we had with Pikachu, this is not a guaranteed win section here. So here against this first rocket grunt, I think we're even going to use charm on it in order to reduce its damage output. And then we can go into the Thundershock. So now we're taking significantly less damage, but we probably needed a Baryon. So it fails a Tail Whip turn one, which is very good for us. It gets the Tail Whip turn two, but I think we're going to be able to knock this one out. It turns out to be a four hit KO on Rattata. So we're already in a terrible spot with this Pokemon. We might not even be able to get the chance to take on either Bugsy or Rival 2 here. So there we managed to paralyze this Rattata and to get it to miss and to get it to fail a Tail Whip and to be fully paralyzed for a turn. So a lot of luck on that one. Here we're going to now paralyze this one and it still knocks us out. We're not even getting close to getting through these Rattatas. So unfortunately, I think Pichu might be the first Pokemon that gets eliminated right here on these Rattatas. But we have to test out now some TMs. So the first TM that I'm going to use is Mud Slap. The entire point of the Mud Slap strat, as we're going to learn it over Tail Whip, is that maybe just maybe with Paralysis plus some accuracy strats, we can find a way through this first rocket. So I have sat here and experimented with this for quite a while, and it's 
just seeming like this is basically impossible. Even with the mud slaps, we first paralyze him, and then we get him to be fully paralyzed, and then we start setting up the accuracy drops with mud slap, but he's doing between 10 and 11 damage per hit with the ratata, unboosted without any tail whips even hitting me. So we're basically in a three hit KO range here, and we have to get through two Rattatas. So it just simply does not work. Pichu, I'm sorry, but you have to be eliminated from this. You're out of there. So coming back and looking at our results so far, Pichu has to join the fail column. So we've had two Pokemon fail so far in this episode. Meanwhile, everything else has gotten through. Some have gotten through very, very easily. Some have needed quite a bit of luck, but hey, if we're going for things like struggle strats and one critical hit, we got to go for the strategies that are a little bit lucky when they're using the Pokemon's moveset as well. That being said, we have two challengers left in this episode, Sandshrew and Sandslash, who are going to be able to take advantage of Stab Mudslap. We'll see if they need it or not, but let's try these last two to finish us out. Now, Sandslash is one of those Pokemon that I always felt was super OP in Gen 1. I mean, it was part of the Yellow Champions team with its Slash and Earthquake that did so much damage. It felt like a virtually invincible Pokemon. That being said, in practice, it was because of the fact that when I play on minimal battles, I'm usually under leveled at that point. So yeah, the Sandslash is going to do a lot of damage, but when you're playing normally, and especially when you've got a team and you can just have super effective moves, it kind of gets wrecked as a ground type. Gen 1 really hated ground types. But here in Gen 2, I'm actually very interested to see how these Pokemon perform, especially because they don't have any major type weaknesses early in the game. I do imagine they'll struggle against the rivals Bayleaf, and as they progress in the game, they might struggle against, for example, Chuck's Poliwrath but we'll just have to see how that actually works out. So as we come here into the Slowpoke well, I'm gonna start off trying not to change my moveset. We only have Scratch and Defense Curl and Sand Attack, but let's see if it's enough to get through these trainers. And with that, we're gonna be pretty good here against this final Rocket Grunt. I don't see any way that he's gonna beat us with his tackles. So there we go. Level 12 comes in and we have defeated the Slowpoke well with our Sand Slash without even messing around with the Mudslap strats. Now, we haven't learned Mudslap, so we can't really fight rival number two. That's going to have to be the strategy there. But for now, let's just go ahead and take on the trainers in Bugsy's gym and see how this goes. So here as we come into the Bugsy fight, let's just check the stats on our Sand Slash. We're coming in at level 13 with 47 HP. We have the Pink Bow on. We have Scratch, Defense, Curl, and Sand Attack. We've got 35 attack, 38 defense, 21 special attack, 23 special defense, and 26 speed. Keep in mind, we could use the accuracy strats on that Scyther, given the fact that we are just using a normal debuff move with sand attack. It can still hit. So let's try this. Let's see how this goes. So first things first, we're just going to go all in on the scratches here against the Metapod. It does use Harden, so it's going to take a little less damage but this shouldn't be a big deal to get through. Now out comes Kakuna. Poison Sting is resisted, but it does get the poison status on us. Fortunately, we did knock it out. Now, Scyther is going to go for Fury Cutter. It misses the first one. Now it's building up, though, and we've got the poison on, so I think we just lose this attempt. So let's try again. If we can ever get there without the poison status, I think we have a decent chance to get through this one. So that is still not working. So there are a couple of options that we have available to us. One is to go Mud Slap, which we're going to need to learn anyway for Rival 2. And the advantage of that is that we can Mud Slap against that Kakuna, hoping to get it to miss and not poison us. The other opportunity, of course, is to go for the Swift Strat, which will be an upgrade on Scratch. But let's just try the Mud Slap first, since we know we need this move either way. So here against Bugsy this time, we're not going to change anything against the Metapod. We're just going to sit here and scratch over and over again and easily get through that one. But now is where we change up. We're going Mud Slap here on the Kakuna since it is neutrally effective. And we're just hoping to get its accuracy down at the same time that we slowly whittle this one down. 
so that hopefully we don't get poisoned here. So we do get through that one without poison status this time. And now I think we can go for some sand attacks on this Scyther. We just want to get its accuracy down as much as we possibly can. And then a move like Defense Curl makes a lot of sense. Let's just use a couple to get our defense nice and high so that if he does hit us, he's not going to do as much damage. And now we can just start scratching and we see that he's really just not doing that much. And we get through this fight on the first attempt after we get through without being poisoned. The Mud Slap strat basically worked. So with that, now all we have to do is take on our rival number two, and I think Mud Slap's going to be enough to get through this one. So here against rival number two, we're going to Mud Slap against this Ghastly. It's not quite a one hitter, but it is a two hit KO there. Very nice. Croconaw comes out. I'm just going to stick with the Mud Slap strats as it's going to Water Gun and do a lot of damage here. But if we can just manage to get its accuracy down enough, we might be able to get through this one. Now, clearly we could argue that we should have gone up against Bayleaf, which would be using Razor Leaf, which has a pretty high critical hit chance. I just decided to go against the Croconaw in the beginning here. Small mistake on my part, perhaps. Here we do manage to knock the Croconaw out though with our accuracy strats, and now we can scratch here, and we are just barely going to get through the Zubat. So that kind of raises the question, would we have gotten through the Bayleaf? I'm not sure that we would have. Keep in mind though that its Razor Leaf is not 100% accurate. It's 95%, so it has a higher chance of missing. We've already seen that in a couple of these, but that's something that's kind of interesting to test out. I may have to come back again with this Pokemon just to see how it would have done if it had gone up against the Bayleaf. With that being said, that was pretty darn close, so I'm not super confident for the final Sandshrew, but let's just see if we can get the last Pokemon for today's episode through this section. So here with our Sandshrew, since we already know that we'll need the Mud Slaps in this section, we're just going to teach the TM right away. Basically, anytime that we had to use the TM with an Evolved Form, we're just going to assume that it was also needed for the Unevolved Form, because, I mean, come on, <laughs> is it going to get through without these sand attacks? I don't think so. So let's just try this one against these rocket grunts. So here we level up to level 11 and we learn sand attack. But we're just going to sit here and just spam scratch on these Zubats. I think this is the way to go. They don't really do much damage as long as they don't confuse us and have us hit ourselves a bunch of times. So we're just going to scratch them down. So here we've made it to James at the very end. He's going to send out his coughing and we're just going to start mud slapping it. Ooh, I sand attacked instead. Rip. But here the mud slap is super effective and it's the same type move. So it looks to be a four hit KO here on the coughing. Easy, easy victory. So now we can go ahead and heal up as we make our way into Bugsy's gym. So here we have made it to Bugsy without really any problems, but let me reset one time. Let's check the stats as we come in here. So our stats on Sandshrew, we are at level 13 with 40 HP. Scratch, Defense Girl, Mud Slap, and Sand Attack is the moveset. We've got 29 Attack, 31 Defense, 14 Special Attack, 17 Special Defense, and 20 in Speed. Now, I think I'm going to give a berry for this one. I think this is the way to go because I think we're just going to go for the accuracy strats in this one pretty darn hard. So let's see how it goes against Bugsy round one. So first things first, against the Metapod, I think we just sit here and spam Scratch this whole time. And fortunately, we get through that one very, very easily. Out comes Kakuna, where we're going to go for the Mud Slaps here. Get a critical hit turn one. We're just trying to avoid the poison in particular here. And it's not like we want to use Mud Slap on anything else. So we get poisoned the final turn. Are you kidding me? So out comes Scyther and he goes Fury Cutter, but we're going to start sand attacking him like crazy and just hope that we can get a range to maybe get through this. Let's just see. Oh, he critical hits and knocks us out. I was going to say, what? let's just see what the damage from scratch is on that Scyther. Now, one thing that is clear, obviously, as a unevolved form, we're doing less damage here than we were doing with the Sand Slash. 
we're also being outsped after we get just one string shot so this is kind of a tough spot overall but if we can get through without poison i think we at least have a shot here so let's just see unfortunately we get poisoned yet again but i just want to see how much damage scratch does scratch did six damage so again this is a nine hit ko range against the scyther if we don't have anything else set up so i think this is a spot where we can logically go for the swift strat swift is a 1.5x on our damage output compared to scratch so i'm simply gonna learn it over scratch right now and let's try this fight again so here with swift it looks like that would normally be a four hit ko range on this metapod we're just not going to get it because it used a harden but very nice we get through that one we're gonna go back into the mud slaps here on the kakuna just because yet again we're trying to avoid the situation where it uses poison sting and poisons us so here we should be able to knock that one out very nice no poison this time and now we're going all in on the sand attacks here against the scyther as we heal up with the berry so we're just trying to get its accuracy down nice and low so that hopefully we can whittle it down with our swifts so here we're swifting and we get a nice crit there and there we go we managed to get through bugsy but it required swift and mud slap in order to do it so two tms for this pokemon now we have to see if we can get through our rival which is not a guarantee. Remember, we were nearly getting two hit KO'd by Croconaw's water gun with our Sand Slash. So this might be impossible for our Sandshrew. Let's see. So here we go, rival two, attempt number one. I'm going to mud slap him first. We are slower than the Ghastly, of course. He uses Spite, and then we finally knock him out in two hits. Out comes Croconaw, it goes Leer turn one. But now Water Gun did so much damage. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure if we will even survive two turns if we have the berry on. So I'm going to give the berry just to see, but let's check this one more time. So here, yet again against rival number two, we get licked turn one and paralyzed. But here, the Mud Slap, we heal up with the berry, but the next turn, we still get knocked out. So this is... A different situation than the sand slash like the sand slash was in the position where it was out speeding here assuming it wasn't paralyzed and it would be able to set up the mud slaps first on the croconaw and it was still able to survive two hits from this pokemon we can see here that we are purely getting knocked out in two hits which means that we would have to get crazy good luck in order to have any shot here I'm going to give it a couple more attempts just to see if we can get the luck, but I highly doubt that this one's going to work. So here we're getting a run where we are getting some pretty crazy accuracy luck. We get hit by the water gun there as we have to heal up and he knocks us out. So this is a spot where I just don't think that we have enough luck to get through. It's not a situation where we're out speeding. It's not a situation like Pikachu where we were able to set up all the double teams early in the fight so that we didn't even have to worry about them later on the fight. This one is purely praying that after you get hit by the first water gun, you can get the mud slap and that he never hits you again. That is ridiculous amounts of luck. That is, you gotta think, like it's in gen one, I did the calculation on this once and it was like a 3% chance or a 3.8% chance, 3.9% chance, I think, when you do the math, that you could set up all six turns of accuracy or evasion and not get hit even once by your opponent. And that's what we have to do here. And keep in mind, those moves have been nerfed in Gen 2, where instead of the first accuracy drop taking them down to 66%, they're only down to 75% and it's just lower and lower ranges from there. So I just don't see this one working. There's definitely not enough luck to get it to work. It's luckier than just getting a critical hit, which is like 6%.
So we're going to call this one right here. Sand Troop, you're out of there. So in the end today, we finished with 23 Pokemon having beaten Bugsy and Rival 2 on minimum battles. We ended up with five that are in the fail column now. Three new Pokemon joined Squirtle and Totodile as Pokemon just, just couldn't get this done. Pichu was the first one that couldn't even get the Slowpoke well done. And that's kind of surprising to me. I didn't think that those rockets would really wall anything. But now we know that it is, in fact, possible. <laughs> now, that does it for today's episode, but we got to look ahead to next week, where we're going to be coming back with the Nidos that have gotten through. Of course, Nidorean female did not get through, but Nidorina Nido Queen did, as well as the entire Nidorean male line. We're also going to come back with Clefairy and Clefable, which means we're going to get another baby in Clefa. And we're going to have Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff, which means we are going to add Igglybuff as well. Then we're going to come with Roy Merkel's very special Vulpix. If it fails at any point, we will give it access to Hypnosis. That's a channel member pick. I didn't choose it. We got it through on Minimal Battles straight up last time, so it might just have a shot to continue without even needing the egg move that Roy Merkel as a channel member offered to it. Ninetales, of course, should be pretty OP in this next section as well. Then we're going to check out Lantern and Chincho. And we've got Togetic, And we'll finish off with Zatu. 17 Pokemon. Tell me your predictions down below. My predictions are pretty simple. I think that the Nidos are pretty much going to crush. Maybe Nidoran Mail will fail. We'll find out. But other than that, I think those Pokemon are solid. I think that the Clefairy line and the Jigglypuff line are going to benefit from sleep strategies. The fire types we already know are going to completely crush Bugsy's gym. So it's really just a question of how they do against the rival. Maybe Vulpix could fail there and it might need to go into that hypnosis strat to make it work. Lantern and Chincho should be pretty interesting in this next section. I'm imagining that Bayleaf might be hard. We'll see. And then finally, the flying normal types have all basically been solid up to this point, and Togetic knows Metronome, so that's probably just fine. Zatu, I think, will also find a way through this section, given that it's going to have Stab Flying. Let's just see how it goes. Anyway, that does it for this one, guys. Appreciate you for watching. See you in the next one. Later.